Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a final year medical student at Cambridge University. And this is the first in a new series where each month I'm going to be talking about my favourite things I've discovered that month. So things like books, uh, blog posts, articles, podcasts, products, stuff that I've kind of dug up uh, in my life and I want to share with you guys each month, hopefully. That's the plan. So today's video is going to be about my favourite things from January 2018. Uh, everything is going to be timestamped below, so you don't have to watch the whole video, although you can if you feel like it. Um, yeah, let's roll the intro. That's, that's quite a nice intro, isn't it? I mean, I, I quite liked it. It seemed, it seemed cool. Lots of pro YouTubers use intros in their things, so I thought I'd, you know, try and do it. And, and never mind. So in this video, we're going to be talking about four things. Firstly, it's going to be my new favorite blog, uh, which is the Journal of Medical Ethics blog. Uh, secondly, it's going to be a new podcast that I discovered, and that's Ed Miliband's podcast uh, called Reasons to be Cheerful. Thirdly, it's going to be about a book series that I started reading recently and absolutely devoured called the Mistborn series. You probably might have heard of it, maybe not. And finally, I'm going to introduce uh, hand lettering as a concept, and that's something that I'd, I'd never really discovered before. But yeah, let's, let's do those in order. So firstly, I want to talk about a new blog that I discovered, and that's the blog of the Journal of Medical Ethics. I discovered this while preparing for the Charlie Gard video, uh, which was on the channel a few weeks ago that, you know, seem, people seem to like. And the Journal of Medical Ethics is a medical journal that's uh, published by, uh, as part of like the British medical journal, the BMJ, their kind of conglomerate. Uh, and their blog has very, very accessible articles about interesting current affairs-y, medical ethics-y topics. Uh, and I've spent the last sort of few weeks reading through the backlog of some of them because they're really interesting and because I really like medical ethics as, as a field. And especially the way the arguments are phrased in the blog. It's very, it's, it's very fair. The, the writing is really good. This is this guy, Ian Brassington. He's absolutely sick. I just love his style of argument. A really interesting uh, sort of duo of articles uh, I read last week, I think it was, was about uh, eugenics. And I'll link those in, in the description below. But I, f I found this really interesting. It was a rebuttal to an article that someone else had written where they were talking about um, the correlation between socioeconomic status and someone's IQ. And there have been a lot of studies that show that uh, IQ correlates with socioeconomic status. So if you have a higher IQ, you tend to be in a higher social class. There are also a couple of studies that have shown that if you're born into a lower socioeconomic class, but you happen to have a high IQ, then that increases your chances of moving up into a higher socioeconomic class as, as you grow older, so it increases social mobility. So the original article was, was, was arguing that kind of this, this idea of designer babies, if we can sample a number of embryos and we can select you know, the one that has the highest likelihood of being intelligent or you know, having a high IQ, they're not really the same things, but again, you know, that's more in the article below. Um, they were saying that if we allow people from a lower socioeconomic class to choose uh, embryos that have higher, uh, a higher propensity for IQ or intelligence, then that might be one of the things that tackles social immobility across, across the world. Um, if you give this option to poorer people, the article says, then chances are they'll have more intelligent kids and therefore those more intelligent kids can rise up out of the low socioeconomic classes and you know, we improve social mobility as a whole. So this was an article called The Fall of the Meritocracy by a guy called Toby Young, who I think has been appointed to some position in the government recently. Um, and the two blog posts on the Journal of Medical Ethics blog are arguing against this article. They're arguing for the idea that, yes, while there might be a correlation between IQ and socioeconomic status, there are probably other confounding factors that, you know, explain explain this. For example, the presence of parasitic diseases that you're more likely to get in a lower social class, and those can stunt your cognitive development, which means that you're likely to have a lower IQ as a result of it. And um, between these two articles, they explore this concept really nicely. Uh, I suggest you read the original article as well, because it's interesting, uh, and also the two follow-up articles on the JME blog. I'll link them below. But yeah, that was something I discovered on, on the JME blog, and I'm going to be following it every week now. Uh, on that note, just to quickly mention, uh, I'd really recommend using something called Feedly. Uh, it's like an RSS feed aggregator, kind of old-fashioned, but like I use Feedly to read all the blogs that I follow these days, because otherwise it's such a pain in the bum to manually visit every blog uh, to check when they've got new content available. But if you add it to Feedly, then each day you can just browse through the list of articles on your phone or iPad or whatever, um, and you can see what new articles are out from all the various blogs that you follow. Um, so yeah, would recommend that. Uh, so that is my favourite new blog that I've discovered this month, and that's the Journal of Medical Ethics blog, and I would really recommend it if you have a vague interest in the field at all. Secondly, I want to talk to you about a new podcast that I discovered uh, called Reasons to be Cheerful, and it's hosted by politician Ed Miliband, uh, famously 
ex-head of the Labour Party, and a radio presenter called Jeff Lloyd. Uh, and the two of them have, have a really nice, good, banterous dynamic between them that makes for really interesting listening to. I first got introduced to it when, when my friend Sahil, who's a medic at Oxford, uh, invited me along to one of the live screenings uh, of, the, of their podcast. Uh, and in that episode, they were talking about mental health. So they were interviewing Ruby Wax, who's a comedian who's written a book about mindfulness and evidence behind that. They also had uh, George Ezra, the famous singer who I absolutely love on the show. And he was talking about uh, his new album and also sort of dealing with depression, anxiety, that sort of thing. And they also had Professor Sir Simon Wesley, who uh, used to be the president of the Royal College of Psychiatrists. Uh, who incidentally I had dinner with uh, via the Cambridge Medical Society. Like me and the MedSoc president had dinner with him. It was just like the three of us had some steakhouse in Cambridge uh, a few years ago. So that was, that was interesting uh, seeing him again. Anyway, each week in this podcast they talk about sort of interesting current affairs. Uh, so the one I listened to last week was about prison reform and uh, you know what the stats are around that. Uh, whether the prison system should be sort of punitive, like based on punishment, or rehabilitative, um, or a bit of both, that sort of thing. Um, and they interviewed the guy who runs the, the prison system of Sweden, quite high up. They interviewed like the Prime Minister of New Zealand. So it's, it's, it's quite a nice bunch of cast that they interview for each podcast. Uh, and it just makes for interesting listening, especially if you're interested in current affairs at all. Um, I'm not overly interested in current affairs in that I don't bother keeping up to date with the day-to-day -day news, but I really like it when I can get a good, balanced distillation of um, important points about issues like, you know, the health service, prisons, this, that and the other. So that's something I'm going to be listening to every week and I'd recommend uh, you give it a go if you haven't come across the podcast yet. In terms of how you listen to podcasts, uh, you can listen to them on, on anything. I prefer uh, Overcast, which is a really nice app for iOS. I think it's on Android as well. And it just, it's just quite a nice user interface for listening to podcasts each week. So the third thing I want to talk about is a series of books that I discovered towards the end of 2017 uh, and absolutely devoured. And that's the Mistborn series uh, by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, you might have heard of it, maybe not. Um, and I got recommended this by a friend uh, who also recommended it to about 10 of my other friends who all absolutely loved it and I've been recommending it to everyone ever since. The original trilogy, uh, the Mistborn trilogy, is kind of set in sort of ancient, ancient times, kind of in a, in a different world. Um, it's a very sort of post-apocalyptic, uh, the whole world is ruled by this guy called the Lord Ruler and there's the peasant population that are all downtrodden and there's the, the, the nobility who have their sort of political battles within the houses, that sort of thing. And the premise of the first book, uh, The Final Empire, is that it follows the story of a peasant girl who finds out that she is one of the Mistborn, uh, people with special powers. Um, the magic system in, in, in the series is quite interesting, it's like you eat certain metals and then you can metaphorically burn those metals inside your body and those grant you particular powers. Like let's say you burn pewter, that grants you super strength for a while. Let's say you burn iron or steel, that lets you push or pull metal stuff uh, away from you or towards you. Um, and people who are mistborn have the power to burn all eight metals, so they have all these different powers that they can call upon. Um, so it follows the story of this girl called Vin, uh, who finds out that she's one of the mistborn, and a guy called Kelsier, who is also a peasant, but is the leader of a crew of thieves that steal from the nobility. Um, and the book is centered around this idea that they're plotting to overthrow the final empire. They want to defeat the Lord Ruler, they want to kill him, they want to, uh, you know, give power back to the people, take it away from the nobility. Um, and that's the premise of the first book, and the trilogy is absolutely incredible. Um, as, I, as I was reading it, I thought it might uh, knock Harry Potter off uh, the best series I've ever, I've ever read. Um, on reflection, Harry Potter is still probably up there just because of the whole childhood thing associated with it and it's got a, like, a place in my heart. But the Mistborn trilogy is a very, very, very close second. Um, and if you haven't read it and have some time to read books, uh, even, even if you don't, uh, you know, just like 20 minutes a day before bed, you're gonna absolutely love it. I think it's amazing. Um, and then there are four more books after that that are kind of set in the future, a few hundred years. Um, so you have like guns and things rather than swords. Uh, those are also quite good, not quite as good as the original trilogy, but still really interesting. And next year there's going to be another instalment of that. Um, and that's going to, apparently it ties a lot of things together and uh, Brandon Sanderson is building up this world where eventually stuff is going to start like coming together um, at some point in the future in a few years time. So I'm going to read uh, all the other books that he's written because apparently the universes often kind of touch one another. Uh, and I quite like the idea of that. So yeah, that's probably my favourite book series of 2017 and uh, the start of 2018 would highly recommend the Mistborn series if you haven't read it. Finally, I want to talk about hand lettering. Uh, and that is something that I discovered like literally a few weeks ago uh, on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, and there seems to be this whole like, this whole subculture of people doing hand lettering like really, really well. 
uh, I'll flash up some images on the screen of, of examples of what I mean. And I find stuff like this really cool. Um, I've, I've come across hand lettering examples in the past and always thought they looked quite nice, but never quite realised that there was a whole thing behind it and hand lettering was a thing that people did. Um, and then, you know, when you discover something new and you go down the rabbit hole of the internet and YouTube and stuff and you and you discover that, oh, there's, there's ways to learn this and this is the equipment you need and this is how you get started. So uh, from next week onwards, I'm going to start this like beginner's course in hand lettering uh, just, just for a bit of fun. Uh, I'm going to do it on the iPad and I also want to do it in, in real life. And I think it would be really nice to uh, kind of get into this and um, maybe for birthday cards or thank you cards or whatever, just like doing custom custom designs. Uh, and also for Instagram, and I think also it might uh, help my general web design skills because, you know, being able to create custom typography for titles uh, is is something that I've thought about for a while but didn't realise that you, you actually could do it. So, yeah, hand lettering is really cool. Uh, maybe if you've not come across it before, you might like to explore it. Browse some Instagram pages, I'll link stuff down in the description below. But yeah, that is the fourth of my favourite things for January 2018. So, that concludes this video. Uh, we've talked about the JME blog, the Journal of Medical Ethics blog. We've talked about uh, the Reasons to be Cheerful podcast, hosted by Ed Miliband and Jeff Lloyd. Thirdly, we mentioned uh, the Mistborn uh, series of books, which I would highly recommend. And finally, I introduced this idea of hand lettering uh, that I've recently come across, but that I want to explore in more detail. So, that brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I've um, never really done this sort of thing before. Apparently, it's a thing on YouTube for uh, like beauty vloggers and stuff to uh, post their favorites from January, February, and so on. Um, and it seems like a good thing to do because often I consume a lot of content but don't really think about it a lot. And I think if in the back of my mind I'm thinking, oh, you know, I've got to make a video at the end of the month where I talk about my favourite things, does this make the cut? I think that'll encourage me personally to be a bit more reflective of the stuff that I do read and the podcast that I listen to and so on. Um, and yeah, I really hope you found it useful. I uh, hope you might have discovered some new things, uh, you know, links of everything in the description below. And so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. But also, could you let me know in the comments uh, if, if this is a thing that you think I should continue with? Uh, or if you think that, you know, if you'd like it to be shorter or longer or more thing like, you know, I, I want to find out what, uh, what you guys want to want to watch. Because uh, otherwise I'm just kind of spouting whatever I want to talk about. And while I think there is some merit in that, it's, it's also nice to, to know that the stuff that I, I, I'm saying and the, and the videos I'm making are actually, you know, resonating with people. So if you do like the video, please could you leave a comment down below, let me know. And if not, then I would really appreciate any sort of constructive criticism and all that. Um, but yeah, uh, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.